welcome back for a cannon fodder that wasn't directly preceded by another cannon fodder. Yay! While this week is generally light, the main subject is something I'm extremely excited to talk about. So, let's dive in. The highlight this week is our first subject, Halo Mythos, a guidebook releasing in October of next year. Last time we talked about it, I compared it to the Halo Encyclopedia, but it seems that's not the most apt description. As Grimm describes it, Mythos is more akin to a walkthrough of the Halo universe and the stories contained within, from the time of the Forerunners to the end of Halo 5. Having read through the description numerous times now, to me, it sounds like this book is more akin to a giant timeline of sorts. While the encyclopedia had timelines itself, it was more of a loosely organized set of entries on various topics. Mythos seems to be taking a more linear approach to the story and elements of the Halo universe, and that's something I can definitely get behind. Now, please, 343, Fall of Reach timeline. Make it happen. Anyway, in addition to new story details, there are more than 50 pieces of original artwork that have been commissioned for this book, such as the image we saw last week depicting two characters from Halo Shadow of Intent, the Prelate and Tul Juran, facing off. While it is still early, this Halo Mythic guide would seem to be the penultimate guide to Halo, both for new fans and old. As if we needed to be excited about anything more than Halo Wars 2, right? Moving forward, we have a call for images of Sanghili Honor Guards for CF Snapshot, and after that, a couple of community questions. The first asks when Halo Wars 2 will take place, before, during, or after Halo 5. Grimm says, yes. Now, as funny as it would be to just dismiss that as a joke, how cool would it be if he were serious? I'm personally still banking on a story set during the Covenant War, like within five or six years of Halo Wars 1, but who knows? The second question asks if there are any surviving Spartan 2s as of 2558 other than Blue Team and Naomi. Grimm, once again, says yes. Last week we got our first hint at this from the description of the Mark IV armor, noting that there are active Spartan 2s using that set. The question is, who? Time will tell, as always. To wrap things up, Grimm lets us know about an interview with a very special someone. If you saw the Cartographer's Gift livestream last week, you likely got to see Andy Bravo and Jay Frechette interview the legendary Joseph Staten. On the other hand, if, like me, you missed it, that particular segment is viewable on YouTube. Link on the screen and in the description box. It's not the most revealing or anything, but seeing Joe talk Halo again is just an amazing experience. And with that, we move on to the universe entries. This week we have the Z400 Pursuit Disruptor Grid Generator or Splinter Grenade, an update to the Banshee article, and an update to the Spirit article. Starting out with the Splinter Grenade, this is basically just another setting on the Z040 Pulse Grenade. While the UNSC isn't sure why or how this mode was unlocked, it's theorized that, once it was clear that no flood infestation was present following their awakening, Promethean forces just decided to switch over to this grenade mode. It seems that, similar to the games, the Splinter Grenade is just more effective against human and Covenant forces. There are times where it's good to get an in-universe explanation for certain changes, and this one is certainly welcome. It also leaves open the possibility for other settings, be those in Halo 5 or beyond. Imagine being able to switch between grenade modes in some future game. Free idea, 343. Moving forward, we have the update to the Banshee article. This update adds information on Halo 5's T-54 Banshee, information we went over in-depth before Halo 5 came out. The Spirit update is also for the Halo 5 variant, this being called the T-57. The new Spirit is very similar to the T-25 of yore, but features upgraded armor, improved maneuverability, and faster troop deployment. Interestingly, there are rumors that these upgrades were achieved with the help of a secretly sequestered Huragok, though they remain just that. Rumors. And that does it for today. Like I said, short, but damn good. Now before we go, I have a couple things to talk about. First are a couple shoutouts. First is for a channel called Reclaimer Reach. Run by Tyler, who has been part of both Ultimate Halo and Halo Follower, he recently relaunched his own channel. He's produced some top-notch content in the past under other names, and has only improved since. Second is a channel called Halo Vlog, run by a gentleman named Charlie. He only has a few videos at the moment, but he's a devout Halo fan, you can tell. Head on over and show him some love. And last thing I promise is another exclusive interview. Remember that interview with Frank O'Connor I posted a while back? Well, I have something very similar in the works. Don't expect anything huge, but it's something I'm excited to post here. You know, eventually. Anyway, that's all for today. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you. Profusely thank you. 
If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.